Hello and welcome back again to another video here on TryHack Me. Today we're going to do another room on the learning path called Web Fundamentals. We're going to go ahead and tackle the room called Idol. So it's a room I haven't solved. Idol is the one that talks about indirect, insecure, direct object reference, which is also the very first answer to the very first question because it's easy enough just to answer that. All right, so we're going to do this room right now and this is about Idol. So, um, Let's find out what that is. An example is that we have a profile, you know, online and we can access something by the ID of 1305 to see some sort of information. In this particular case, it seems like a user ID on the profile. So we can see a particular profile ID with some stuff. All right, so what if we actually alter that to 1000 or 1304? Can we then see another user? That is one of the problems. So let's go ahead and view the site here and then say, what we're gonna do is, this is an inbuilt site. They want us to uh, click the view site button, try to see the flag, but it's going an exploit. Uh, and then we're gonna exploit the idle vulnerability. All right, so we have something, can I see that? Let's click on something. Okay. 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 Okay, so under orders we do have something right there. One, three, one, two, three, four. Now what if we, could we can we alter this here? One, two, three, five? No. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, three. No. What about a thousand? and we found it. So we're gonna go ahead and take the flag and put it in. Now it seems a bit weird maybe, this is this is just you know me clicking and typing some numbers, but what really happens is that we're gonna request for the server the resource from the orders module. In, in some way that's just some code, you know, um, and, and it's gonna look at the, uh, the number thousand as an order number. Then we're gonna go ahead and display that. Now, we did not order that. Another user altered the order of thousand. And we can see it's a different person. So if we go back to one, two, three, four, you know, we can see that if we, if we can that at all, I don't know. It seems we can't, so we just maybe can go on back and do that. That, no. Can we, can we get it again? There we go. No, it's okay, it's locked, fine. So we, we just do that by, you know, um, changing the number. All right, so next one is go ahead and finding the idols in encoders, uh, encoded IDs. And in this particular case here, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the Base64 encode and Base64 decode website. And the encoding is done by taking every special kind of letter there is, in, including letters and numbers, and only use HCC, small HCC capitalized, series of nine, and an equal sign. That's the only things it can use. So we can see the image right here. So uh, it, it, it kind of asks, what is the common type of encoding used for website? Uh, I would say base64. So that is the, the, the answer for this now. Um, if you're new to this, you should definitely go and research base64 a bit, but that's the way it is. Finding idle by hashed IDs. Now, it could be a little more complicated than to say to deal with the encoding ones because a hashed ID is just a, a sequence of, of numbers, doesn't really say anything. You cannot really do anything with it. It's not, it's not possible to try to directly just reverse it as it is with an actual encoding, which is the name hashing means one way hash or one way encryption, where encoding means you can just encode and decode as you go. So it is worthwhile putting hashes through web service such as Crackstation, You've got billions of, of uh, different kinds of results you can go ahead and, and, and match. What is the common uh, algorithm for hashing IDs? Well, that's gonna be MD5. It's also a bad one, so I wouldn't necessarily use that to hash your passwords and stuff like that. It's uh, best to do uh, checksums for. Finding idols for unpredictable ideas. It talks about uh, the ID cannot be detected using the above methods. An excellent method ID detection can be create two accounts to swap the ID numbers between them. If you can view other profiles content and using their ID numbers while being logged in with different account, you found a valid idol vulnerability. So that is another way of doing it, having two different accounts and then 
you know, exchange numbers basically. What is the minimum a number account you need two? That is the minimum amount, okay? Okay, so we are IDOS located. They are located, the endpoint, the target, and so on. This is just a, a read and understand. So so basically it's gonna say IDOS are for example located through uh, the URL bar. It can also be as a part of the text you see on the actual website, depending how it's Built. It can be post requests, it can be get requests. Um, it's, the problem is that the I don't do talk about object reference. If you're posting something, you're not really re referring something, but it can lead to somewhat the same, depending on how the website is programmed. Don't limit yourself to say, thinking only get requests because sometimes programmers like to be different or special. I don't know why, but Okay, <laughs> then they use post request instead of get request. They don't ask me why. Now I've got an actual practical example. Let's boot up the machine. So while this is booting, let's read the text and understand what you need to do. Begin pressing start machine. I did that. This is the URL it's going to generate. So whenever the time is up, we're going to replace this lab web URL and we're going to access the domain of thmlab.com. So to log in, to do that, we need to um, give the custom account to create an account. We need to create an account, go to account tab. The account section gives you the ability to change your information such as username, email, and password. Notice the username and email is pre-filled with your information. Pretty standard, right? Uh, we start by investigating how this information gets pre-filled. If you open your browser, dot up the tools, select the network tab, and refresh the page. You see it calls an endpoint called pass API v1 for version one, customer ID and then the user ID, which is probably our ID. Now the page return in JSON format, uh, your user ID, uh, username and email address. We can see from the path that the user information shown is taken from the query, strings, ID parameters, see image below. Yes, I'm gonna get some JSON back. Uh, this is pretty standard. I'm gonna do that so you can see it. You can try testing this for ID uh, parameter for an ID vulnerability by changing it to another user ID, try selecting ID one and three, then answer the question below. So I'm gonna do that. The server's up. Let's go ahead and paste this into our browser. This is the beautiful, fantastic website of ACMA IT support. I'm gonna press F12, pull this up, zoom, 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 go to network, update it one more time. And we will see that path they talked about somewhere. Somewhere. Oh yeah, we need to create an account, sorry for that. So let's see, welcome to customers, contact, create an account, sign up. So it's gonna be test, at test, test DK, and password test and confirm password, sign up. Uh, okay, so we need to more than so it's gonna be tester, there we go. Okay, we in. Now, uh, I think we're gonna click the your account, I guess. Let's press F12 one more time. Go to update tab, zoom in a bit. I think we should have it now, shouldn't we? We've got this right here. It's um, requesting custom ID. It doesn't look like thing they talked about. Let me just see, maybe I, they won't count. Nope. Why can't I see it? Did I pick something wrong? Maybe I'm not reading the text. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Open your browser, network tab, refresh the page, and see an endpoint called, okay. Click your account. So I click your account. Network tab, I see the endpoint. Well, I don't, but let's just check it out. Response, response, there we have it. It is this one actually, so, so okay. So we should be able to, you know, um, test this in some way um, and get another result back, you know, one way of doing that is opening it right there and you can go ahead and check out number one. So we're gonna go ahead and get the Adam, we need to answer the questions, uh, the username, it's gonna be Adam84, and take that in there, there, boom. And for user number three, 
there, and it's going to be John 911. Oh, the email address, sorry for that. It's going to be jfakemail. <laughs> Funny. All right. Okay, so I, I, I actually put in another letter too much, but it kind of ate it, so it's fine. Okay, so that's really how we're going to solve room, use the tools. You know, depending on which browser you use, it works a little different, how to, to read it and stuff like that. It didn't exactly say uh, what they told me it would say, um, the actual path. Oh yeah, I can see it right there on the on the headers. I was, I was actually thinking about it. Sometimes, I think it used to be right here. I can't remember, but it, it is right there, as you can see. You could also just copy paste this and then put it in your browser. That is exactly what happened when I double clicked on it. And then you're going to get the response. So that's it for the IDOR, the insecure direct object reference room on TryHackMe. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. You know, we'd really be happy for that. Also consider, you know, sharing it and telling other people people about it. The more we can, you can get to do that, the, the more content I can create. And really, it's all about, in the end of the day, how many is going to watch the video. It's going to really motivate me even more to create more awesome videos for you guys. All right. So really happy you know, checked in on my channel. Going to see you again online. Have a really nice day.